enter another summer affected by COVID. We know that the way we live, behave and enjoy culture is still not quite as we might like it to be. After the government announcement on the 14th of June, we learned that we are not able to carry out a private view in the format we would like to at the start of the exhibition and therefore we are inviting you to watch this exhibition inside instead. My name is Mirka Goldenham and I am Head of Visual Arts and Resident Artist at Wilcher Create. Open exhibitions provide an opportunity for any artist. It is often a platform where academically trained artists can meet hobby artists and young artists can share space with the more experienced. In its nature, the Open Submission Exhibition aims to present a wide spectrum of creativity within the artistic community. This year, our summer open includes not just one, but two exhibitions. Picture This is a body of works from Salisbury Photography Club, selected by the club committee members, Dr. Jane Osborne and Tony Oliver, together with myself in autumn 2020 for an exhibition intended for the winter. COVID had different ideas and we were unable to present the exhibition then. However, as it turns out, Delivering this exhibition now as part of our summer open seems a much better plan in the end because both parts of the open showcase creativity thriving in this region. Unlike Picture This, the exhibition Small Pictures is a result of a wide call out open to all artists based in Southwest England. This call out did not specify genre or making method or age or professional achievement. On the contrary, every year we try to cast the net as wide as possible in the region in order to gain the most exciting exhibition. To shed a bit of light on the process we use at Welch Creative for selecting this type of exhibition, this is what we do. Each year we approach three different individuals who are practicing in or connected to a particular area of visual arts. They might be an artist or a gallery owner or a teacher. They might be art historian or curator. The point is that as the exhibition curator and an artist closely connected to the area, in order to keep my own subjectivity out of the picture and to gain the most exciting exhibition, I rely on other professionals jointly to make the selection, which I then curate. I am very pleased to be able to present in this video two interviews with the people who are pivotal to the exhibition. here by Tony Oliver. Hello, Tony. Hi, Mirka. Please, could you explain what is your role in Salisbury Photography Club and how is the club structured and where does it sit uh, within the national collective of the other photography clubs, um, all jointly nurturing the British fascination with photography? Yeah, certainly. Um, well, my role, my current role in the club is I am the competition secretary uh, on the committee. I've previously been uh, chairman of the club and held other posts as well. So I'm, I've been actively involved in, the, in, in our club for 17 years now. Um, we've got about 40 members. We uh, mixed of men and ladies, but all united really by a, a, a common love of photography. That, that's why we all meet. Um, Sorcery Photography Club uh, is an independent club, but we're also affiliated to the Southern Counties Photographic Federation. Um, there are 71 clubs in our federation, which spreads out a fair bit uh, across the, the south of England. 
you know, the common thread is we all love photography uh, and, and enjoy uh, it as our hobby and as our art form. Let's speak about the today's changes and um, new things. Um, so I know that recently the club has changed its name. It was formerly known to be Salisbury Camera Club. Um, and I know that you jointly took the decision to rename uh, the organization to be Salisbury Photography Club. And there is an important and fascinating reason for this. So can you please tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, certainly. I mean, it was a decision taken by all our members. It wasn't just something the committee decided, it was something we all wanted to do. Um, and obviously we have been very proud to be sort of camera club since 1936, but we felt that it didn't totally represent what we were all about really. Um, we're not just about cameras and some people um, thought that's what our club was. You know, our primary um, enjoyment really is photography and all aspects of photography in making images, taking images, post-producing images, learning about photography, appreciating photography, uh, not just about cameras. Cameras are part of that. On 1st of September, Tony, you will be presenting a talk um, at Salisbury uh, Art Centre talking about photography. Uh, could you please give us a little spoiler about what your talk is going to be covering? I suppose in simple terms, uh, the talk will, will be about understanding your camera, uh, taking better photographs, how to create better photographs, and enjoying photography. Um, I appreciate that the talk will be, or the people attending the talk will be all levels of knowledge. So it's difficult to pitch a general sort of level for, for the actual uh, input. So I'm trying to include a little bit for everybody really, um, you know, from, from the basics through to a little bit more advanced understanding of photography. Uh, maybe a little bit more being creative with your images, how to, uh, you know, again, how to enjoy yours and other people's photographs. So it's not just about taking a record of something and that's my picture. There's so much more you can do with photography and get greater enjoyment from it. Which five pieces from the selection uh, are still with you now? Uh, why you remember them and what is it about them? Um, in no particular order, the five that I like, there's one called Windy Day. Uh, it's a monochrome image of a very, very blowy day with an umbrella being turned inside out. Uh, and uh, there's some accompanying grasses blowing in the wind as well. Uh, and it has a lot of energy to it. The second one I've chosen is entitled Stable. It's a very, very subtle uh, equine portrait of a, of a horse's head uh, in, in a stable door. But what makes the picture so beautiful for me is the lighting. It's very, very um, even. It brings out the detail and, and the texture in the horse's uh, uh, coat very, very beautifully. Totally changing the style for my third choice. There's an image called Daisy in Isolation. Uh, it won't be everybody's choice. It's what we call a Marmite picture. Some people like it and some people really dislike it. I happen to really like it. It's a very good example of, of, of selective depth of field. And by that, I mean really that the uh, vast majority of the image actually is, uh, is out of focus. Uh, but the real sharp focus is on the daisy itself. And it, it, to me, enhances the feeling of isolation, the daisy in isolation. My fourth, fourth choice is called Medina After Hours. It's uh, almost a travel, travel sort of social, social documentary picture. Um, as you look at it, you see there's an awful lot going on. And, and start, you think this is quite a chaotic scene. But actually, as you look at it, you realize that the photographer has, has used uh, that chaos to create an order and create composition, which is so important to all, to, all, uh, to all images, to all art. And the last picture of my five, again, something totally different, is called In the Bath. Um, obviously, an image which has been created, um, uh, staged, if you like, but it has really strong narrative and it has some humor. And humor in photography is great. It's something that creates reaction. Uh, and it's uh, very, very valid. I could have chosen more, uh, but you pinned me down to five, and those were my five. Mirka, I'd like to take the opportunity to ask you a question as well, please. Photography has sometimes struggled to, to be recognised as a pure art form, as an art form in any way. I think it's something which is, is improving, but it's still we still struggle to be recognised as an art form. Um, how do you personally view photography uh, in relation to other artistic media? Uh, well, that is a really interesting question, and I think the root of the actual question is in your kind of cultural background. So I come from 
former Czechoslovakia, and I don't recall being taught or told um, about um, hierarchy within uh, kind of ways of artistic expression. You know, the, the photographers that I grew up looking at as a child were people like František Drtikol or Karel Tajge. And from my own hometown, there were two very well-known Czech photographers, Jaromir Funke and Jaroslav Sudek. And they were always considered very much as artists, not anything else. In the same way that people who work with clay were considered to be artists, not anything lesser. So the differentiation between the fine arts and other arts is not part of my thinking. And I think it really perhaps belongs this sort of hierarchy development within different artistic expressions is very much a kind of English or British thing. And um, many artists, I think, over the last several decades have been trying to um, break these barriers down. And perhaps there still is a work to be done. But uh, I think we just keep at it and not allow this sort of way of thinking to enter. What do you think? I, I think that's a really interesting answer. And thank you. And I think you're dead right with the... Uh... Uh, the, the cultural and the national cultural thing, because it is something we've struggled perhaps in this country more than other countries. And uh, I'm sure we're getting there. And I really thank you know you and the Art Centre for the opportunity to have the exhibition, which I think will, as people visit it, will will actually start to break this down. And hope people will see as much as the photographs, they will see art, and and that is what we want people to see. Thank you, Tony, for talking to me, and I will see you very soon. Thank you, Mirka. Thank you very much. Embracing the creativity within everyone seemed particularly important this year, and the Small Pictures Exhibition format offered the chance to seek out artists from all walks of life. The selectors for the Open Pictures, part of the Summer Open Exhibition, were this year Sally Ferino. Sally is an artist art teacher and head of arts at Burgate School. Jonathan Mansfield. Jonathan is an artist and deputy director at Pound Arts Gorsham. And Megan Smith. Megan Smith is an artist, workshop leader and young artistic voice on the panel. super excited to now be joined by Meg Smith. Hi Meg. Hi. So let me ask you what pulls you towards art? When I look at your work what I see um, is exposed through your art, your personality which is caring and nurturing and I also see your inquisitiveness. Can you now speak about your work and what it means to you? Um, to be an artist and what do you want others to see in your work when they look at it? Um, I think for me art is um, it's a way of expressing myself and just I, I do it because it's fun and I enjoy it as well um, and I am quite inquisitive like you said and I like to look into different materials um, and kind of play with them um, I do use art to work through things in my life. I find it quite a therapeutic um, process. So finding different materials and, and kind of playing with things. So there is no denying the last two years were not a walk in a park. And during this time, many people reached out to art and craft to explore new skills and new possibilities and creatively to enter places they hadn't before. Um, do you have your own particular insight into art helping people and enabling people to be well? Um, I think definitely from a personal perspective, um, as I said, a lot of my own work is about how I process things and 
I think a lot of people do struggle with talking about emotions for one reason or another and art is a really good way of processing that um, and expressing it as well not just classic art but any form of creativity so like music writing or dance um, it's a great outlet for things that we can't or don't want to say out loud particularly so you were invited to the panel to uh, present young voice within the arts and I particularly enjoyed the few times um, during the panel when you disagreed with one or both of, of the other panelists because um, they brought in their, their years of experience and um, you brought in kind of the obscure insight of youth. Um, but what I want to know is what should we do in order to keep this momentum working with young people? Um, I think offering opportunities like the one you've offered me to work alongside practicing artists in kind of behind the scenes sorts of things um, is really beneficial. Um, and so I think offering opportunities like that where young artists can get involved in selecting work for exhibition or even being allowed to curate their own exhibition where they advertise for um, other artists and, and hanging exhibitions and all that behind the scenes work that gives an understanding of the business sense of the industry as well because that's not something you learn in school particularly so offering that knowledge is, would be really useful um, but I think it could go the other way as well I think there's a lot of younger artists have lots of knowledge of technology and how to run websites and Instagrams and that sort of social media side of things. So whether that could go both ways and you could create the space for artists of every age and generation to work together um, and share the knowledge, be good. And going and speaking directly to young artists in the local area, I know that it's been a massive confidence boost for me to be asked to do this, but it's never something that I would have put myself forward for particularly. So being offered the opportunity is um, really helpful for people trying to start up in and get a career in the arts. So I know the selection was now quite a long time ago, but I um, would like to ask you to tell us which from the list of works which were selected um, are still kind of with you now. So let's say we'll, we'll, we'll limit it to five. Can you tell us the reasons why these works are the ones you might be still thinking about? And you know, what is it about them that imprinted um, on your memory? Um, I think one in particular, um, that I really liked was um, called Jail Screens by Jennifer Trowdry. Um And the, I just really liked it. The use of color um, really draws you in the use of white in the foreground and then the red that kind of creeps in in the background. Um, it offers this really delicate form, but with the quite striking color behind. Um, and then there was a series of three artworks um, by Sarah Fote, which was um, Beneath, Concealed and Lay Bare, which I thought just worked beautifully as a trio. Um, the colours and forms that echo between the three pieces um, and unite them, but all, they're also really individual pieces um, and really abstract, but still really soft. Um, I also really liked um, Frail White Edges by Julie Massey. Um, again, I, I really like work that's quite tactile and that you can see into and it's got that depth and it's just intriguing and you want to get up and have a closer look and I, I'd love to see this piece in real life. And there was also Light Up by Sophia Sample. Um, I thought the 
layout of this piece, having the focal point in the bottom right hand corner was really interesting. The, the choice of space and the again, the contrast of the white background and then this really dark, intricate drawing in the corner. Um, and then last one would be um, Kingfisher by Rebecca Purdue. Um, I really like um, prints. It's something I've, I've always really liked. And the detail in this is something that just really speaks to me about it. Well, thank you for your selection. So I'm really looking forward to staying in touch and um, working together again in the future yeah. and uh, seeing you in the exhibition. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching our exhibition Insight. As I said at the start, we were not able to carry out a private view event where visitors would get the chance to ask questions and find out the inside information about the exhibition. And I hope that our video, at least in part, fulfill this role of a private view, but also will reach a wider audience. The Wiltshire Creative Summer Open 2021 at Salisbury Art Centre is now available to see until 4th of September. When you come to visit the exhibition, why not sit down and enjoy a cup of tea and cake or lunch in our cafe? Artworks in the exhibition are for sale and if you feel connected to a particular piece, make it yours. You can do this either by coming into the exhibition and purchasing a piece at the front desk. Or if you would like to buy a work after seeing this video, please contact us at ticketsales at wiltshirecreative.co.uk. If you would like to come with a small group of people up to 14 and would like to have a curator store, please email me on mirka at wiltshirecreative.co.uk. We will have a limited opportunities to do this in August, but please do get in touch so that we can organize a time. Thank you everybody for watching our video and see you soon at Salisbury Art Centre.